Ian McKellen was not just one of those actors who shouts in the evening, which is what theatre actors are <laughs> supposed to do, <laughs> but could temper a performance down to the level that would uh, uh, appeal to the, to the camera. And so that was my calling card. But I'll tell you a story that leads on from this. Brian Singer again. Uh, it was casting this old uh, Nazi living in California. It's a Stephen King novella. And he asked to see me. And uh, the minute we met, he said, oh, you're too young. <laughs> oh, what a pity. Oh. Mm. Well, I said, oh, well, never mind. And we, we had a nice meal together. And towards the dessert, he said, uh, have you seen, um, have you seen uh, John Snessinger's new movie? I said, what, Cold Comfort Farm? Yes, he said, that's it. I said, yes, I have seen it. <laughs> <coughs> he said, who, who, is the, who is the old guy who played the preacher? I said, that was me. He said, you play old? I said, yes, I'm an actor. So he gave me the part, and, uh, and then, then he put me into X-Men. But... It's luck, isn't it? It's all luck, chance, luck. The thing about luck is that you have to be ready for it. That's my advice to young people. Get ready for the moment when there might be some luck. Uh, luck won't descend and put it all right. You've got to be ready for it. Let's go back to Brian Singer. Um, when he presented the idea of X-Men to you, how did you connect with that role? What was the way into you for uh, playing the mutant Magneto? Well, uh, uh the X-Men movies were made because they'd been a success on television, like, like so many other films. I mean, we forget now that Superman was on television before it was on the big screen, uh, and others too. Uh, before that, of course, it was the comics. And we're going for a long, long time. And Marvel, who published the comics, uh, told me that it was their favorite publication because it was actually about something. I mean, with all respects, Superman isn't about anything. It's a, a, it's a fantasy. It's a, about a man who uh, changes his personality when he puts his underpants on. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Spider-Man is a bit the same. You see? The, the Hulk, they're, they're all the same. And I think James Bond is the same, you know. James Bond is the wimp who actually turns out to be a Superman, but you don't recognize it. Anyway. Uh, but X-Men is about the mutants. Uh, and I was playing one of them, Magneto. Master of Magnetism. Uh, they have, each of them, a, a special developed, God-given uh, quality, which upsets the rest of the population because they don't have it, and, and, and they're frightened that uh, people with special powers will, will be uh, endanger the rest of the population. Uh, so as uh, outsiders, um, mutants have to decide what they're going to do. Are they going to assimilate themselves, adjust and become part of society, or are they going to, which is uh, Professor X's view, or are they going to do what Magneto suggests, which is uh, no, stand up to ourselves by being potentially violent. That, uh, that uh, dilemma is in all civil rights movements, you know. Do, do, do we frighten the horses? Do we, do we break the windows? Do we set up bombs because we know we're right? Or do we make the case? Do we argue it? I know in gay rights, I, I, I take the, the latter point of view, Professor X, I'm a fan of. But when Brian presented it in these terms, I thought um, that was a project worth getting involved. And, and Marvel say that the people who read the comics are young blacks, young Jews, and young gays. They all, they all relate to what it is to be a mutant. I, I'm, I'm sure the demographic of the uh, audiences for the films is much wider than that, but... Nevertheless, it's um, even in all the fantasy, all the nonsense, all the thrills, of course, uh, I kept thinking, mm, this is a story worth telling. It's about something. 